So resolution 76 2024 adopting the school capacity chart i move to approve cr 76 2024 second cr 76 2024 has been moved and seconded is there any discussion no miss harry can you please call the vote on cr 76 chair young yes dr jones yes miss rigby yes mr youngman yes cr 76 passes Council Resolution 77, 2024, adopting the housing unit allocation chart. I move to approve CR 77, 2024. Second. I move to approve Amendment 1 to CR 77, 2024. Second. Thank you, Ms. Rigby. Um, so this amendment um, prohibits the activity center allocations from being granted by DBC <coughs> until the activity centers are defined um, by DPZ. And I first I apologize to my colleagues for sending you a description of, and you have it, <laughs> very late in the day today about um, the purpose behind this, although I think you probably would have figured that out from the discussion that we had at the work session last Tuesday. Um, I was quite concerned that activity centers had not been defined in our zoning code yet, even though it's been a year since we had passed the general plan. Well, not quite a year. Um, and I found out at the work session that activity center allocations have been granted already to developers in the commercial activity corridor and I was quite concerned about that because as we know as a council and as it was also reiterated during the general plan process the commercial activity cord corridor has not been successful in creating commercial activity um, so that has been a source of concern I think for all of us and there was even a bill that ended up addressing that this is at the same time that we have created these activity centers and all five of us worked very hard on trying to come up with definitions and expectations for activity centers that are not reflected anywhere yet except in the general plan. Um, and just to give you some examples of things that we were hoping to see in activity centers were um, developments that would create job op opportunities through new mixed-use activity centers that serve as destinations and include a mix of uses that complement and support one another and improve the jobs housing balance I and I mean that's just one example but I and I can't remember exactly who it was that actually went in and amended that but it was one of us I think because it looks like something that we were all working on uh, require activity center redevelopment to provide convenience retail and other local serving amenities at the neighborhood level, which was important to all of us as well in creating these activity centers. And here we are apparently, or here is DPZ, granting allocations to the commercial activity cord corridor developers who are not doing that. Uh, consider establishing housing scenarios that support for sale units to household households making 60% or less of AMI that are financially feasible for the developers. Require mixed-use activity centers to reflect home ownership opportunities. Ensure coordination of HOCO by design and the HCPSS capital planning so that school capacity projects are planned in activity center areas, especially in the Gateway Regional Activity Center, identified for transformation on the future land use map. Um, so none of the HOCO by design policy statements have been folded into the zoning regulations. But as I just mentioned, we did learn that these allocations, these activity center allocations, have already been granted to developments along the Route 1 corridor. I think the thing that really bothers me is that we've spent all of this time coming up with, uh, well, actually, we counted them up. Uh, I think it was, let's see, 
150 statements, descriptions of activity centers, 40 of which were actual um, principles that had been set forth. And none of these statements are being considered when granting these activity center allocations because DPZ has not put anything out there regarding activity centers, even a zoning regulation amendment, which would have been a simple enough thing to do following the enactment of the general plan. So my question here is, does the general plan matter at all if we are granting housing allocations under the status quo and not seeking to implement the years of planning, feedback, and careful review that went in to the general plan. And I include all five of us here on the Howard County Council when I say planning, feedback, and careful review, because we spent many hours, many, amending the general plan to include these definitions, to de redefine these definitions, to make these definitions what we wanted to see, and now these allocations are being given out willy-nilly to groups of developers on Route 1, and I'm not even sure that that's where we should be putting all this stuff, but that's a different issue. So that was my reason for filing this amendment, and um, I hope that you all will support it. Is there a further discussion? No. Okay. I I, I, I want to ask. So, um, so I think the premise of the amendment makes sense. You know, like we all debated for a long time on what an activity center should be, and you listed out what it should be, and now people can pull these allocations and not have to do any of that. Exactly. The problem is, and what I didn't put together when we did the general plan or even when you and I talked was we got rid of the old chart. So we've now dropped this activity center bubble over projects that can't get an allocation and there's no indication of when DPZ or us are going to cr create that code and I don't want to halt projects that are in process and like there's nowhere for them to get allocations because the allocations used to be geographic and now they're not. That's my so, comment. That's my and, dilemma. And I understand that, but I also think that there's apparently, even though I know I've spoken to DPZ a number of times, I've talked to members of that department over the last nine months since the general plan was, um, passed asking them, begging them to put something in the code that reflects all the work that we did on these activity centers and nothing. Uh, I would not stop and I don't think that this amendment would stop what's already in process. Um, but I can ask uh, Mr. Cook if that would be the case. Would this amendment um, reach back to what was already in process? If they haven't gotten their allocations yet. It, it doesn't say so on its face, so generally I would, I would say it would no. not. It would, it would apply prospectively upon becoming effective. If the council wants to make it retroactive or exempt something, then I would not want, it, it I, can do I, that I, by a, an amendment to this yeah, amendment. No, I agree with Mr. Youngman that you can't, well, we shouldn't reach back to the entities that have already been given allocations because that's already been promised. They're already making the plans. We don't know where they are in the process. Um, and that's, that is the way that, it, that's, that's where we're at now. But I also don't see, apparently, any way to put any pressure on DPZ to actually include all of this language that we were so that we spent so much time and effort, and they did too, describing what these activity centers are unless we pass a piece of legislation somehow forcing them to do so. I don't think we could do it in the context of, of this because it's a different approach, but I don't know that any 
I, I don't I don't know I don't want to speak for anybody else, but if we passed code here and it wasn't the detailed sort of like writing subdivision code from the council because I don't know that we know how to do that, but um you know incorporate it in like you know between now and the time DPZ comes up with X Y or Z, here's the framework of of what an activity center is supposed to look like and what it's supposed to incorporate. I, I, maybe there's something like that we can do, but I just, the problem is, and I never thought of it was we got rid of not only the old chart, but the methodology of the old chart, you know, existing communities, the rural West, you know, downtown Columbia. And now we have this and if you're just sitting there as a property owner and you weren't even involved in the, the the process, we've now dumped you into this activity center thing, and the only allocations that you could get are not attainable until the government does something else, which the government has not indicated any progress to do. Well, the government the certainly could do it. I, I would assume, given that they're the ones who wrote the 363-page general plan book, that they could, they're could they familiar enough with what, and if they're not, I now have a chart <laughs> that shows yeah. where the 150 mentions of the activity centers are and what the 40 principles are specifically that discuss the activity center. Um, and you, they certainly could start there. Um, it's, it shouldn't be that hard to do. Um, and I don't, we don't know why, um, they are not proceeding with, a, a ZRA at the very least. At one point, I believe somebody from DPZ did say something about, um, doing a, Z, a zoning regulation amendment, but we haven't seen anything. Nobody's talked to us about that. This was the total highlight of the actual general plan. We did spend an awful lot of time. Well, and it says it. right here, and I'm looking at the February 29th, 2024 letter from Linda Eisenberg, who is the director of the Department of Planning and Zoning that was attached to the paper copy of the general plan. And um, they, and this letter specifically says, this plan focuses most future commercial and residential growth into activity centers, areas targeted for mixed use, compact development, while prioritizing community characters, character in other areas of the county, strengthening the county's commitment to environmental preservation and conservation, blah, blah, blah. Um, but this is, this was the focus of the entire plan. I, I, I absolutely get it. My only problem is between now and the time we can pass something, the DPZ can write something, like whatever needs to happen, we're stripping existing rights away from existing property owners. And that that we can't do. I, I just don't, you know, what if we can't come up with something that we can all agree on? I, I just... I never put together that we were taking this allocation chart away and replacing it with this other allocation chart, and there would be some would be disconnect in the yeah like like all this other stuff had to happen before the allocations would come back, and you'd have properties that basically can't get allocations so well they could if our department of planning and zoning yeah, but would if, just if, if, put together I'm not, but I'm not willing to strip away regulation. someone's I'm not willing to strip away someone's it, the existing rights they had up until the time we passed the general plan while we wait. I mean, we can complain, <laughs> shame, put on the spot. We can try to do their job for them, but it doesn't change the fact that we inadvertently, I think, you know, I don't think it's any, but we weren't trying to do that. But when the old chart went away and we changed that whole methodology, we basically took rights that property owners had away with nothing to drop in its place. I don't think, I certainly never envisioned that our Department of Planning and Zoning 
would take this long to define activity centers. Neither did I. I'm, I am so disappointed. Yes, Ms. Rigby. The general plan was passed seven months ago. Um, they are currently working on the gateway plan, which we knew during the general plan passage. We've received updates on the housing incentives work group. Um, and then the two things that haven't been started yet, as far as I'm aware, are the APFO and Newtown Task Forces. So it just seems a little premature to say that it's been so long when it's only been seven months. Um, we really do. We have our regional activity center, which is the biggest, most important one that we are doing in that plan, which was absolutely um, delineated in the plan. And that one is getting its whole own incredible definition. Um, and that's what's in process right now. So uh, to me, it's, it's premature um, to, to say that it's been so long. So that, that's where I am. I will also just note that we've um, been in discussion for about 15 minutes at this point. Thank you. Well, to me, it's overdue. And they, the, given all the time and effort, the years of planning that DPZ did, um, thinking about and considering and writing about activity centers, they could have been prepared to do something very shortly after this plan got approved. And um, I'm really sorry that we're in this position now to have put all this time and effort into defining activity centers only to see that there's nothing in the law anywhere that actually carries this out and allocations are being given on Route 1 for these activity centers that don't do all the wonderful things that we were hoping they would do. Okay, Ms. Hare, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Jones, did you? Okay, Ms. Hare, will you call the vote? On Amendment 1 to CR 77, Chair Young? Yes. Dr. Jones? Um, I definitely understand um, the concerns that have been discussed. Um, I also agree with Mr. Youngman um, that holding up projects or holding up allocations for projects um, may be detrimental to what we want to see as a county going forward with these projects. Um, I would also like to reiterate what Ms. Young said. Um, it would be nice to have a definition. Um, the timing of everything, as Ms. Rigby said, um, is, is important as well. So maybe this is, I don't know, um, with the million things that DPZ and everyone upstairs and third floor and second floor and first floor of the George Howard building are doing, um, we would uh, very much, I believe, as a council, like to see a definition in the near future of activity centers and other things, in addition to all that you're doing. Uh, but um, I won't support this amendment in fear of it holding up um, certain projects. So my vote is no. Ms. Rigby. Um, so at present, the primary way that we receive and that affordable housing units are created in our community is through our inclusionary zoning law. Um, this has a higher standard in TODs, which are located along Route, route 1, um, along our rail lines. So I think with that in mind, and then also picking up that following this line of reasoning that any passage of a general plan or an adoption of the allocation chart from it would essentially function as a moratorium. Um, you know, that I, I really do disagree with some of the principal points of this argument. I think you can have things, what's the saying? It's you can have it done fast, you can have it done well, or you can have it done cheap, but you gotta pick two. Um, I, <laughs> I would love it fast, but I prefer it done well. Um, and I prefer it done at a pace that is acceptable to the limited tax dollars that we have to expend. So um, my vote is no on this amendment. Mr. Youngman. Y you know, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's funny when I vote last, everybody that talked before me is right. <laughs> yeah. Different votes, different right. perspective, but everything everybody said here is right. Yes, this would create a moratorium that we didn't intend. And yes, DPC is busy, and I get it, but we sketched out what the activity centers were supposed to be in the general plan. It's not like they're starting from scratch. And because this kind of came out of nowhere, I, I don't want to support kind of creating this moratorium, but I think the message that I hope DPZ is hearing from all of us, regardless of our votes on this, is we need a definition of activity centers or this is going to come back in a couple months and we will put a moratorium on it and it won't be our fault. So I, um, 
I think this is well intentioned, and um, and we need to get our act together on defining the activity centers because we did. It was a big leap in exchange for a lot of things that we're not going to get if they give all these allocations out before anybody has to comply with the stuff in the general plan. But for now, I'm a no on the amendment. Um, amendment 1 to CR 77 uh, fails. Um, so CR 77 2024 has been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? No. Ms. Hare, can you call the vote? Chair Young? No. I vote no. I will not vote to um, uh, pass a housing allocation chart that has activity centers in it that are undefined. The Department of Planning and Zoning has received millions of dollars over the last six years to use for uh, consultants to do all of this work that has been mentioned. Um, and in the last two general, following the last two general plans that were completed, comprehensive rezoning was completed within a year. Um, a singular zoning regulation amendment should be the, the Department of Planning and Zoning should be capable of doing that. And um, again, my vote is no. Dr. Jones. Yes. Ms. Rigby. Um, so most jurisdictions around us and in the state of Maryland are approaching, um, after following their general development plans, they are approaching their zoning through many small area development plans. Um, and they're doing these small area plans so that way they can have really robust engagement and that it can be a very community-led process. Um, I truly hope that that is the approach that we take here versus sort of one big throw all the, everything out and then throw all the new paint back on. Um, I truly hope that we take a rational, reasonable step-by-step uh, -step process um, like many of our neighbors are doing. Um, my vote is yes. Mr. Youngman. Yes. CR 77-2024 passes. Council Bill 37-2024 introduced by Christiana Rigby. School facility surcharge amendment for single family detached dwellings. I move to table CB 37-2024. Second. The motion to table CB 37-2024 has been moved and seconded. Ms. Hare, can you please call the vote? Chair Young? Yes. Dr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Rigby? Yes. Mr. Youngman. Yes. The motion to table CB 37 passes. Skip all the way to the end. Oh, look <laughs> at this. And so this concludes our July legislative session, and we are adjourned. Happy Fourth of July, everyone. This meeting is no longer being recorded.